Hey guys, it's Nockney here. Uh, gonna go over your FRQ for Unit 1, since some of you guys are asking for an explanation on this. Uh, hopefully you guys had a good weekend. Let's see here. Uh, on this problem, they gave us three functions and given to us in three different forms. Uh, function f is given to us as a graph, right, from negative 5 to 0. Uh, function g is given to us in a table form and it's evaluated from 0 to 1 that has values from 0 to 1 right and h of x is given to us as this function here x times ln of x plus k some constant k we don't know for x is greater than 1 and then they tell us that a function j is a composite of those three functions, right? And it goes all the way up to each of those endpoints. So at zero, the function transitions from f of x on this graph, which ends at, it's like approaching two, and then it goes to g, right? g of x then continues from zero and is evaluated, thanks to that equal sign, at zero with this function of g, which happens to be two as well, and goes on to one, and h of x takes over after one with that function there, right? And to start this off, it's asking us at specific values for a, right? Negative four, negative two, and zero. They want us to determine whether or not the function j of x is continuous for those values, okay? Now what we wanna do is just basically look at those points. So part a is fairly straightforward. We're gonna go ahead and look at this first one, which is at negative four. And when you look at negative four, right? Is that continuous, right? And you can clearly see that it is not, right? We don't even have to go into the definition, but we could say that the definition as a function is approaching from the left side and it's approaching from the right side does not equal the same number, right? And that's one of the rules for con continuity, right? It needs to approach the same number from both the left side and the right hand side. Um, if you want to justify your answer, you could just tell them it's a jump discontinuity, but you could also write down that the limit as if you want to write it out like this, the limit as x approaches 4 from the negative side of j of x is not equal to the limit as x approaches 4 from the positive side of j of x, right? That, that works too. You can write it out like that and you say that's not continuous because of that, right? And that will be accepted. But you can also just show, a circle, uh, show the picture and just say that, oh, there's a jump discontinuity at negative 4, okay? The next one up is at negative two, right? And at negative two, the limit does exist here. The limit from the left side and the limit from the right side does approach the same number. I I'm sorry, I shouldn't have said it does exist. It, it approaches the same number. The function itself though, is not equal to that limit, right? The limit as x approaches negative two, right? Is equal to two, right? The limit is approaching two. But the function itself, oh, this is horrible. What am I doing? I cannot write it like that. The limit as x approaches negative two of j of x is equal to two. But j of negative two, right? The value of the function at negative two is actually equal to four. And since these two do not equal each other, again, that's the second um, uh, de part of the definition for continuity, right? This also has to hold true and it does not hold true. So since that does not hold true, we can also say that at negative two, it is not continuous there either, right? And we call that a removable discontinuity, if you guys remember that, okay? Last but not least here is gonna be at a equals zero. Now, for this one, it's a little trickier, right? Because at a equals zero, it's actually split between two functions. We have to look at it as it approaches from the left-hand side, the limit as x approaches zero from the left-hand side, and when we do that, right, and it's approaching from the left-hand side, it's looking at the f of x function because that's right here, right, it's defined it. For anything less than zero, that's the left side of zero, it's coming in through your f function, which means that it's approaching uh, two, it looks like. And then we do the same thing for the right-hand side, right, from the positive side, the limit as x approaches zero of j of x. From the positive side, from the right-hand side, it has to come from the g of x function, and if I look at that, it's approaching Right up here, it's approaching two. And it actually is evaluated at that point too, right? So they tell us that the function is also equal to two at x equals zero. So I can just say that this is also equal to two. So they end up equaling to each other, and it also equals to the actual value 
So at A, I can say that it is continuous there. It follows those two uh, properties that we need, right? That the two li the limits exist and the function exists that, and it equals to what the limit is when you evaluate it. Okay, so that's part A. Part B now talks about uh, for what value of k will j of x be continuous at x equals 1, right? Now, x equals 1 has us dealing with the g function and the h function, right? Because that's where the left-hand side is less than 1 and the right-hand side is greater than 1. Uh, it's approaching 1, I should say, from the left-hand and the right-hand side. So we need to take the limit and make sure that they equal to each other. And the function value also equals to, it looks like, since it's equal to, when it equals to 1, it needs to equal to... Uh, the output needs to equal to one as well. So, right, to follow those two properties. So when I'm doing this pro for part B right here, I need to make sure that I'm looking for it to be continuous. That means that the limit as X approaches one from the negative side of J of X needs to equal to the limit as X approaches one from the positive side of J of X, right? And if I'm looking at one from the negative side, I'm looking at G of X pretty much, right? So g of x, if I go back up here, as it approaches 1, is going to equal to 1. So this right here is equal to 1, because I'm just looking at g of x. On the right-hand side, I'm looking at h of x. Okay, I'm looking at h of x. So I'm basically looking for the limit as x approaches 1 for h of x. And h of x is this guy right here. Okay, so it's going to be the limit as x approaches 1 from the positive side, now just say it's approaching 1, for this function right here, x times ln of x plus k. Well, I can just directly substitute that 1 in for x for this problem because there's no issue there, right? There's no, there's no uh, undefined function when I plug in 1, so I can just go ahead and plug that in. I'll have 1 is equal to 1 times ln of 1 plus k. Well, ln of 1 is just 0, right? Natural log or log of 1, right? Anything to what power is going to give us 1? Anything to the 0 power, right? So this is going to be 1 is equal to 0 plus k, which means that our k has to be equal to 1 in order for j of x to be continuous at x equals 1, okay? And that's it for that one. I know it, it seems a little simple, but it, it, it all comes down to do you know the property, right? Do you understand what does it mean for a function to be continuous, okay? You got to know those two. Uh, we had it as three in our class, but it's really just the limit of the left equals to the limit to the right. And does the function exist and equals to that said limit? Okay. All right. Moving on. Part C. Write an equation for each horizontal asymptote for f of x. Now, this is the part that's tricky. Horizontal asymptote, right? When you learn this in pre-calc or even in, I, in your previous classes, they always said that it like gets closer and closer to this horizontal line, but never touches it. Right? It will go something like that or something like that. Right? That's not the true definition of a horizontal asymptote, though. See, what you want to do for horizontal asymptotes is use the limit definition for it. Okay? The limit definition for a horizontal asymptote happens in two ways. Either the limit as x goes towards negative infinity, of some random function f of x, right, um, is going to equal to some constant. And the other definition for it is the limit as x goes towards positive infinity of f of x is equal to some constant, okay? So again, we're, we're looking at f of x only here, right? Now, f of x doesn't go towards positive infinity. It stops at zero. Right, so there's no horizontal asymptote going, going to the right, going to infinity. Right. Now, what about going to the left? As it's going towards negative infinity, this thing is actually going to go off towards what? It's going to go off towards the number three forever. And you'll say that's not an asymptote; that the function is on that line. And again, that's the old definition of what a horizontal asymptote is. Right. We got to go based off the limit definition here. Right, and since it's going towards negative infinity, uh, as x approaches negative infinity, the limit is approaching uh, three. The horizontal asymptote, right? The equation for it, the horizontal asymptote, is going to be 
y is equal to 3. And when you have horizontal lines, right, that's the one case where the function itself is also its own horizontal asymptote. It's, it's a weird thing, but it is a, it is a thing that you need to make sure you are aware of. Right? If you have a, a flat line going across, that's also considered a horizontal asymptote. Um, yeah, and you, you kind of were not really given examples like that, I think, in your previous classes. But just keep that in mind. It, it, a flat line across is also its own horizontal asymptote, unlike a vertical asymptote. Vertical asymptote, it can never touch that line, right? Because then it's no longer a function because it won't pass a vertical line test. Okay? Anyways, I'm getting distracted there. Uh, next part up is asking us to now find if there's a, if you look at this, the limit as x approaches infinity of j of x of this composite function, right? And if I'm looking for things that towards positive infinity, I'm going to be focusing on h of x because that's everything greater than 1, right? That's where infinity is. So I'm looking at the limit as x approaches infinity of x times ln of x plus 1, right? We found out what that k was earlier. I guess it doesn't matter. You could also just leave it as k because we're looking really at what x is doing, okay? Now, if this was like 3 or 5, it doesn't really matter, right? But this guy is going towards infinity, okay? So what am I going to have here? Well, when I have it for x as infinity, it's going to come out as infinity times natural log of infinity. And if you know the natural log of infinity, this thing is also going to go basically towards infinity as well. So I'm going to have infinity times infinity. This function right, is going to go towards infinity. It's going to be increasing forever. That means that this function, as x increases, so does j of x. Right? As x goes off towards infinity, so does j of x goes off towards infinity as well. This means that there's no bound. There's no horizontal asymptote as this thing goes off towards the right. Meaning, if I were to graph this, this thing would just be increasing forever. I don't know how it's increasing. I just know that it's always going to be increasing. All right? And that, that's it, guys. Um, they have the answers for these review problems for you, but I understand that maybe it's not as clear because it's just basically a scoring uh, sheet. It, it, if you have the numbers there, please make sure that you're scoring yourselves accurately. This is just practice for you, okay? Um, I want you to be ready for this. And if you have any other questions, you, you let me know. Um, we'll... We'll work it out uh, during my office hours, okay? All right, with that being said, I'll, I'm going to start on the second video. And with that, I'll see you guys later on.